Whoa, that one's trippy. Oh my God, did that work for you? So in this video, we're gonna explore optical illusions through art. Maybe try and invent a few of our own. Hey, that actually sort of works. Oh my goodness. Next, let's go. I have here a completely solid wooden pencil, but with the power of my optical illusion powers, I'm gonna transform it into rubber. Does it look like rubber? Let me know in the comments if you're super impressed. In this video, we're gonna try to create some epic 3D eye trickery optical illusions. Now, I've seen these around before, but let's start off at the beginning, the Wikipedia article. An optical illusion is an illusion caused by the visual system. It's an illusion of the optics. For example, this is a classic one. The eye thinks that A is darker than B, but actually they are in fact exactly the same. Do you see a rabbit or do you see a duck? I mean, it's easy to see both depending on how you tweak your perspective. This is sort of a cool one. The uh, negative space makes it look like there's a triangle there. You assume that the near line is smaller, but that's just perspective tricking the eye, of course. Ooh, what's this one? An example of motion-induced blindness. While fixating on the flashing dot, the stationary dots may disappear. Whoa, that one's trippy. Oh my God, did that work for you? So in this video, we're gonna explore optical illusions through art drawn on paper that other people have done that we can do, maybe try and invent a few of our own, who knows? So let's see what fun people have had making optical illusions. This one looks pretty simple. Let's follow along, shall we? So I'm working from the same foundation here. They're just drawing a line straight down. So we've got these two straight vertical lines. Let's do that. And then they're just going off on an angle up to the point of the fold in the paper, directly out from that original line. Yep, going back in. The line in the middle, and then we're just doing the rungs, I'm assuming, of a ladder, and then it's through the camera's angle. <gasps> All right, let's try that, you ready? That's sort of it, except my ladder's a bit thin at the bottom. I'm doing again, I want a proper ladder. This is very much about an even line, an even width. So I'm doing my best to keep it even. I think I did pretty good. I feel like this one's gonna be better. All right, you ready? Hey, that's kind of cool. It's lit like unevenly. Ah, oh, God. Oh. There you go, that works pretty well. This is our taste test. We're just warming up. So let's say I wanted to draw a silhouette person standing up and I'm just sketching this with the bend already visible because I can see what it looks like flattened with the camera. If I very loosely draw what I think will be a person standing straight and then at the point of the bend of the paper, angle further in this direction. Okay, let's try it. The feet are down here, feet divide and I want I want him to look flat. The shadow is going to go straight back here like this. This is the man's silhouette. I'm going to fill in the shadow and then we've got the angled person. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it's kind of fun to just sort of take the optical illusion experiment and see if I can reverse engineer it into different things. All right, you ready? This is the moment of truth. You ready? Oi, oh, hey, that actually sort of works. Oh my goodness! That's really fun. Next, let's go. I like you, John Harris. Credit to John Harris. Go check out his channel. Link's in the description. I'm gonna follow along. I'm just like loosely aiming and hoping that I'm drawing the right thing. This is fun because I have no idea where, where it's going. <laughs> oh, I drew on the stair. Wait. This is one of my elemental disappeared by heat pens. There you go, look at that, that actually worked. <laughs> if you wanna see the video where I drew with the pens that disappear with fire, go check out that, I'll link that in the description too. Oh, oh. and they're following down the, and then you shade it, I see. And that's why we've drawn the stairs on that angle there, because we just follow that angle in this direction. Oh, this one's gonna be good, I can tell. I want this shading to be smooth. I don't wanna smudge the blue lines I put down, but I did learn about these recently. Blending thing, what did you call it? Bl blending, blending stump, blending stump. Let's blend with our stump to make this shadowy descent really smooth. All right, and then they reposition the page. We reposition our camera. This way, ooh, I think it's that way. I think that's it. Here's a big 3D staircase. That works really well. All right, here's where things get crazy. You ready? Watch this. 
This is another one. This is by 3D Drawing Art. Now we've sort of got a little bit of an advantage here because they will be looking at what you see at the end result, what the camera sees, which makes it all the more convincing. But I feel like it's easy to make optical illusions for a camera or social media or you know, video than it is in real life. I think mainly because in real life we have depth perception. So I know when I look at this piece of paper with two eyes that even if I hold it on the right angle, it doesn't look three dimensional. If I close one eye, it actually does because I don't have depth, 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 depth not depth perception, depth perception, but it always looks real and effective in videos like this. The only real trick is that you're showing the two dimensional and adding the fake three dimensional. You're sort of like highlighting flatness and then making the three dimensions on top of that. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I want to do a piece of paper that has a ball that's resting on a, ah, so that's my problem. So this has to be flat like this, and then so does the circle. So I wanna have like a hole, and there's like a platform with the ball resting on it. <gasps> Ooh, and if I cut the paper, go around with the ball, I can make it look even more three-dimensional. <gasps> okay, I'll cut, wait, I'll make it clearer for you. My test run, ready? Pa this is paper, ball, like that. And I'll do a shadow which will be at the bottom of the ball, which will be here. There you go, see? Whoa, oh, it's already cool. All right, let's do it. So with my blue lines down, I started to sketch out how this might work. Now, I'm trying to sort of reverse engineer how to make up my own optical illusions. And if this works, I'd like to try and see if I can break it down a little bit and show you guys how to do it so you can muck around and make your own. And I don't know, maybe, maybe we could open it up and see how crazy we can get with some of these. I found the best approach, obviously, to uh, constantly watch the view that the final optical illusion would be revealed on. So you're watching the top-down view, whereas I'm watching my shoulder camera view, which has that perspective which makes the piece of paper look flat. But by referencing that and making three-dimensional looking objects and shapes that look three-dimensional to my eye on that angle, I could slowly uh, figure out the shapes that I thought would work. And I tried early on to make it more interesting by rounding some of the edges of that square in the, in the paper that the hole would be through. But after I'd sketched in the pillar and the ball and they looked pretty cool and three-dimensional, then the hole started to look a bit weird. I think because it was following the angle of the paper, I'm I'm not quite sure. In the end, I gave it a go to draw the hole against the angle of the paper, but more on the angle of the three-dimensional objects, which I, I don't know, I feel like it might work. It seemed to work in my sketches pretty well. And with my sketches mostly in place, I went through with an eraser to really soften the lines so I could have minimal construction visible when I went through to the shading after. Before I got to that, I had to get rid of the blue lines that were in the hole and the three-dimensional object so I could then make it look really three-dimensional on the angle I was observing it on. I used my blue pen to draw in the direction of the hole, uh, intensifying that 3D perspective. And then I went through and did the shading. And there were a couple of things I thought could work really well with this. First of all, the shading in the inside of the hole, making it nice and deep would be really cool, but also having shadow uh, cast from the ball, the sphere, over the edge of the paper where the hole is. So it looks like not only is the the ball on the, the plinth sort of three-dimensional and, and pushed out of the paper, but to intensify that three-dimensionalness, if that's a word, it is now I'm using it. Cutting the edge around the ball would obviously make a big difference, but also adding that shadow over the edge of the uh, the hole in the paper would really uh, continue to intensify that. With most of the shading down in place, I then used my blending stumps, went through to soften it all to make it look as uh, geometric and smooth as possible to try and get a really cool shading effect. And last but not least, cut the edge of the paper to make it look like the ball is popping out, jumping over the edge. All right, this is it, people. It's the moment of truth. There you go, that's pretty cool. I'll be interested to muck around a bit to see what works better, because in the end, the hole is more on the same angle as the, uh, the plinth, which feels three-dimensional from our perspective, but from the perspective of the paper, I wondered if it might've been better to go the other way. I'm not sure. What I wanna do is open this up though. I wanna see what you guys can do using some of these little tricks. So both of these tricks, the ones that involve creating the holes or the three-dimensional pop-outs, they involve creating a three-dimensional view 
that is the viewpoint, the camera or our eye, and then the perceived three-dimensional direction, which is the position of the paper. That's the same with this optical illusion. We have our perception that this is the straight thing, the shadow is the bent thing, when in reality, it's the other way around. So I want you guys to share your creations on Twitter using the hashtag Jazzy Illusions. And in a future video, I'm gonna check out your creations, maybe mimic some myself, but also see how wild and wacky you guys can get and have some prizes for some of the best entries. The main thing I'll say is uh, the easiest way to make this work is to look at the viewpoint, for example, in this situation, my camera angle. So imagine this is your phone. You're looking at it from what you want to be, the final reveal angle. And hey, if you have another camera to film a flat top down, just so that the secret is hidden until it's revealed at the end, that's cool too, but not necessary. But by referencing the viewpoint, the camera, the phone, or whatever it is you're using, you can sketch. Let's say I'm gonna do a cube, right? It can be helpful to do little points. So all I'm doing here is doing a dot for the top of a cube, dot down here. And I know that that looks like a straight line up and down because I'm looking at the monitor. Whereas when I go down here, obviously it's in a different direction. So now I have my first straight line for a cube. Let's have a, a perspective based tower that's really jumping out. Again, most of the work is done by carefully referencing where the final view is gonna be. Obviously it takes a little bit of tweaking as you go. I'm gonna have this jumping out of a hole in the paper, but I'm gonna have this time the, the hole go in the direction of the paper. Draw some solid lines. Let's do shading, right? So we do the side of the tower because the light's coming from that direction. Maybe the shadow can just go all the way off the page because then it'll just make it look really tall. And there it is. This to me looks really effective. I think that intensifying the perspective by cutting the paper on the angle worked really, really well. So see what tricks you can come up with to bend my mind with your optical illusion images and trickery and you could go more mind bending or just more cool images with a bit of that trickery in that makes it more intense. Once again, use that hashtag. I'll put the details in the description to how you can get involved. And I'm gonna make sure to add some pretty mind bending prizes in there as well. So make sure to really up your game and surprise me. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit like if you did and subscribe for more fun with art and illusions creativity, all sorts of creative goodness. Check out more videos over there you're bound to enjoy. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining and until next time, I'll see you later.